Good morning and welcome to this service of a parish Eucharist for the 12th Sunday after Trinity. It's what's termed an ordinary Sunday. We wear green for ordinary time. But there is never any time with God that is just ordinary. We should remember that although we're not physically together in our church as we would normally be on this ordinary Sunday, we are still together very much as one body as we worship God in our own homes or with a relative because we are the body of Christ together and together that body of Christ really does make a difference in the world. So we begin our worship by singing that lovely hymn, Hark the glad sound, the Saviour comes, the Saviour promised long, let every heart prepare a throne and every voice a song. So as you are in your sitting room or your kitchen, wherever you are, why not raise your voice as loudly as you wish to bring the Saviour home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we come to worship God together, even if it is around our sets at home or computers, we say together, knowing that all of us at some point today will be saying this prayer to prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered together as God's family, let us ask forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. 
Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The choir will now sing, and we should sing along with them at home, the Gloria. So wherever you are, let's stand and glorify God by singing with our choir. collect for the twelfth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than either we deserve or desire. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And now we hear Lizzie read the passage from Romans, followed by Joan reading our Gospel reading from Matthew today. Love must be completely sincere. Hate what is evil, hold on to what is good. Love one another warmly as Christians and be eager to show respect to one another. Work hard and do not be lazy. Serve the Lord with a heart full of devotion. Let your hope keep you joyful. Be patient in your troubles and pray at all times. Share your belongings with your needy fellow Christians and open your homes to strangers. Ask God to bless those who prosecute you. Yes, ask him to bless, not to cure. Be happy with those who are happy. Weep with those who weep. Have the same concern for everyone. Do not be proud, but accept humble duties. Do not think of yourself as wise. If someone has done you wrong, do not repay him with a wrong. Try to do what everyone considers to be good. Do everything possible on your part to live in peace with everybody. Never take revenge, my friends, but instead let God's anger do it. For the scripture says, I will take revenge, I will pay back, says the Lord. Instead, as the scripture says, if your enemies are hungry, 
feed them. If they are thirsty, give them a drink. For by doing this, you will make them burn with shame. Do not let evil defeat you. Instead, conquer evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who want to lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And Jesus says to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. When I was a nurse working in the hospital, it seemed to me, and I think it has been acknowledged by many, that sometimes people with life-limiting diseases need permission. Permission from the people that they love the most to die. When it is clear that they are prepared, some need to know through word or gesture that their leaving is acceptable. I remember one particular person. We'll call her Jane. Jane knew that she was dying and was ready to do so. We all knew that by every means at her disposal, apart from the actual words, Jane was trying to ask for permission to be allowed to die. Except that her husband, who absolutely adored her, refused to accept that she was dying. And his inability to face the reality of what was happening prevented Jane from a dignified and graceful death. Her physical symptoms and the sadness of her circumstances were almost overwhelming, even for the professionals. Her husband insisted upon nursing her at home. He permitted no reference to the probability of her dying and clung to her little bit of life as though it was his own. Eventually, of course, Jane did die. Her passing became a silent struggle with her husband, an ending which might have been avoided if he had been able to face the incontrovertible reality with fortitude. No blame attaches to him. He loved Jane and could not bear to be parted from her. But perhaps this little story, sad as it is, helps us to understand Peter's response to Jesus when the bad news became too much for him to bear. By this stage of Jesus' ministry, it was clear 
that's clear to Peter and the other disciples that he was the Messiah. But yet, they had yet to understand that he would not be a conquering king, driving all before him and expelling Israel's enemies from the land given to them by God. When Jesus rounds on him so violently, we hear echoes of his very human frustration that Peter is still thinking in the old terms and not in the radical way of Jesus and his rule of love, not power and vengeance. But Peter's response is our response. We do not want Jesus to suffer either. We do not want him to die. God forbid it, Lord, Peter says. But Jesus knows that God will not forbid it. God will not cause his death, but will not prevent it because the free will given to humanity means that God too must watch a beloved child put to death. Jesus is as scared as any of us would be. The serene acceptance of all that is to come is some people's interpretation of Jesus's response to his fate, but this belies his full humanity. Not only does Jesus have to deal with his own feelings, but he has these underscored by Peter's inability to understand and accept the full reality of what is to come. Jesus did not really think Peter was Satan, but simply that this title represents everything which opposes truth and is allied to worldliness, not God's kingdom. At the same time, Jesus does not want the natural anxiety of sorrow of the situation transforming into pessimism, the canker of the soul. The sister of reality is hope in Jesus's message today. There's a clear choice for us here today too. All disciples of Jesus must be prepared for the worst as well as the best. This is the reality of our vocation. We take up our responsibilities and then accept the consequences. This is mature spirituality. This is dedicated commitment. The good thing about facing reality is that it unlocks us from the prison of impotent, unending fear of unknowing and frees us to make a change, to move forward and live more fully. Remember in John 10, life in all its abundance. But that abundant life can be scary at first. All freedom is frightening because everything becomes possible when no one, when one has nothing to lose. Jesus knew this. He was prepared to risk everything and did not need Peter's fussing, however well meant or needy. He wanted Peter to grow up and face the truth and then accept what must come so that he and Jesus could be free to pursue the next phase of their shared ministry. Jesus knew that he was a crucial step on the way to the disciples learning from where they would eventually find the strength to found and maintain the future church. From his example, but also from within themselves. Facing reality with hope rarely disappoints when we undertake it with Christ. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate, 
from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Carol will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are love in community. Draw us away from our narrow individualism to a new understanding of togetherness where differences are welcomed and celebrated and where all ages and experiences can work together to bring in your kingdom on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friends and followers of Jesus, we have come together because of his love for us and our faith in him. Let us now pray for all who need the strength and guidance of God's Spirit in meeting the challenges that bring life. We pray for Bishops Peter and Ruth, thinking especially of Bishop Peter in this difficult time for him. We pray for all church ministers, clergy and lay, that they may serve in humility and holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen and our government and the leaders of other nations that they will promote peace and justice, freedom and opportunity, especially in this time of difficulty which all countries are facing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have encouraged us and given us confidence, for all who have helped us develop our talents and abilities. We pray especially at this time for teachers and all who work in schools as they begin to open again and for the children starting back to learn after a long time out of the school's environment and away from their friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to guide and strengthen all who are fearful. We pray for any who are waiting a doctor's diagnosis, all who are awaiting operations or admissions to hospital. We pray for the loved ones of those who are ill and for all carers. We bring before you any that we know by name who are ill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we trust in you and in your power to save. You are our strength in times of weakness, our hope in times of darkness. We ask you to bless all our loved ones departed and keep them in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To everything there is a season, 
and a time to every purpose under heaven. Loving God, we place our hands in yours to step through each season and we trust in your abiding love and faithfulness as you guide us through each seasonal transformation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We will now sing, you may laugh, but one of my favourite hymns. It reminds me of the joy it is to know Jesus and the power he has that would make us shine in the world. So if you've got a tambourine or a drum or anything, just clap with your hands as we enjoy singing, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. 
Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy. For Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so with choirs of angels and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending song of praise. praise and bless you loving father through jesus christ our lord and as we obey his command send your holy spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son on the night before he died he had supper with his friends and taking bread he praised you he broke the bread gave it to them and said take eat this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the mother of our Lord, St Andrew, St Bridget, St Nicholas and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for me and for you. the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, shared for you and for me. Let us pray. God of all mercy, in this Eucharist you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as our Eucharist draws to a close, we sing that lovely hymn with the refrain that reminds us to look upwards, lifting our heart and lifting our voice and rejoicing, rejoice again. I say rejoice.
so as we go out from wherever we are, whether it means getting up and leaving a place, or whether it means turning off the computer or the television, let us take that joy that we have received with us as we go and rejoice always. And now we ask for God's blessing before we leave this place. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.